pretty pace ourselves. Remember, it is a best of one, and it's very hard to predict. It's just, it's, it's just not the same thing. So could be some interesting upsets here, without a doubt. Obviously, later on in the day, NIP and Astralis, that's a, that's a wild game that's waiting Where's out Manic? there. Where's their coach? Where's G2's coach? I Can don't know. Him? Out for a stroll? Well, okay, because it looked like, well, was it Roban who was standing behind him? It looked like Roban. I didn't see his face. Maybe we'll catch him a little bit later on. It's possible. I want to get camera shots in the future of the coaches behind the players so that we can actually see who's there. Because G2 rely heavily on Medic. At least he was the one who created the roster. But we'll see. This is going to be a quick play onto the B bomb site already. Yes, it will. Flashbang to slow them down. But they're already jumping out. Smoke will block off all of my stuff. Oh, what? He just jumped at him and... I didn't even know what that was. Wiggled his Glock in his face and just killed him. That's so ridiculous. Four on five, and the bomb is down. Good little boost and a good kill for Twist to take down next. And it's back into a four on four. And this is a very, very tricky retake. I don't know if he had a kit carrying him. Probably did. So at least it's on the bomb site somewhere. Twist with another headshot and a third one to add to it. Hunter, though, is wild and wrecking in the back of the bomb site. And Twist, they don't need to fight him. Just. Leave him alone. He's very low on health. He has to go and pick up the kit and defuse the bomb. And Jax will take him down before they even get close. A good start for G2. I, I, it's so weird to see Jax holding up in the B apartments. Usually he's the first body throw, yeah, flying out true. onto the bomb site. And yet this time around, nothing. And he's hiding. I mean, it's got to be Matic behind them. So uh, no word on G2 changing up their coach or anything like that. So I'm assuming it's him behind. But we're going to get to Amanek. Amanek charging out first. Oh, Amanek, though, the thing is, it's like if anybody, if it was going to be anybody else, it has to be Amanek. Yeah, what? just that's sick. It's like he couldn't quite get the bullets out of the Glock, so he was like shaking it. Like, <laughs> get those bullets out. That is sick. But yeah, Amanek, I mean, he could be that second guy to just step up. If uh, the team need an entry fragger and Jax happens to be on the other part of the map, I fully expect Amanek to be the one taking point and he can find kills. Good to see Hunter waking up with a couple of pistol kills as well. That'll feel good for him. Yeah, Hunt, I, I mean, this is the this is the promise of G2, isn't it? Nico, we know that he's going to be good, but the, the Nico and Hunter duo is actually just so much fun to watch when it's working. So we need both. Ooh. Kerrigan, nice scout shot to the dome. It's going to be Nexa to go down next. Olofmeister was lurking in the corner. Now it's a 5 on 3. Brokey playing it close with the Deagle. Again, it's been a little bit nerfed for that kind of close play, but it doesn't make it bad. It just means it's not going to straight rank a whole team at the same time. But you can do a lot with it here, as you can tell. Brokey, no troubles. Actually <laughs> makes the jump out and lives. That's ridiculous. Twist showing up with a shot, and Hunter goes down. Leaves Amanek at a one versus four. So FaZe, very, very quick to respond here. All of Meister going to get the kill. They're going to be able to save at least a couple of Galils and a Mac 10 as well. What a great wow. return. Yeah, yeah. What a perfect follow-up round, and all off of the a Kerrigan getting flashed and still hitting the headshot with that scout, baiting them onto that B-bomb site for Olaf Meister. Deagle's still good. One-shot headshot still does the trick. So if you got the aim, you can still use that gun in such a volatile manner. And so Olaf Meister finding the kill there, just that's just G2 walking in one at a time to their deaths. Anti-eco hell, essentially. HE to top mid. It's going to set it up. Yep, nice <laughs> one-two combo. Yeah, that's great. Whether it's just one person like that, but if they were rushing out, I mean, it's just a good way to slow them all down. So, well enough played. Four versus five. It's chilling out here. All right. Thought for a second he'd actually caught the guy on bench. Rain usually likes to play around here. And for sure enough, it is Rain playing Firebox. Yeah, don't give Nico too many chances either with a Deagle. Obviously of legacy with that particular weapon, so just try and leave him alone if you can, or at least call in a little bit of backup. That's gonna be that good of an eighth, or maybe it would bounce a little bit further back, but um, still, they have a crossfire of sorts set up here by the wind. <laughs> All right, Roki's tired of waiting. He wanted to go for the fight, and they know where Nico is. They can probably even guess that it is Nico here. So um, one versus five against him. They are, they're being respectful. They're sort of boxing him in, and finally he's gonna get a chance there. He will take him down. Good. Still hits good that job. body shot. He hit two body shots on rain. Yeah. That's uh at range, that's scary. Nico is a freak with the Deagle. Yeah, he's got uh he's got some oh, good yeah. highlights. And that's right, it's not right. It's not Robon standing behind G Fuel, that's right. Or behind uh FaZe because uh, I don't think he could make the the, the LAN. Okay. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's their analyst. Man, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. 
Fair enough. We'll figure it out, guys. The internet will know. Different setup here for FaZe. Fourth round, and um, we've got pistols on the G2 side yet again. They would love a bomb plant. Could be nice for the following round. I mean, they're going to have enough cash in the next round to buy something, but yeah, the smoke. Just go for it. It. You might as well try. There's no point in waiting too much longer. Galil, pretty effective here. Rain with the double so far, and they're just all trapped. And they're going to get a bomb plant this time. Everyone nearly from FaZe has shown up here. It's going to be Brokey with a really a deadly round. Good triple on him. Just powerful start for FaZe, even after losing the pistol. 3-1 to one in their favor. Double headshot on Twist nearly kills him, so... This is as good as it gets. Look at the money now for FaZe Clan. After losing the pistol round, they have a fantastic bank going into this buy. And this is a buy round where they have to go for Galil's in order to afford grenades on G2's side. So G2, they've hit a real stumbling block here early on in the game. And now we have to see them dig deep here. And it's looking like we'll get a default kind of approach from G2 in this round. And some aggression into Palace. One-two combination. That's what had to happen. Brokey does get that trade kill. So important. But now you've taken the Lurk out of the picture for G2. This really hampers G2's strategy. And it's so cool because, I mean, it, it, trading one for one is probably going to favor the T side most of the time. But it's a MAC-10 that they had. So it also is a little bit easier to throw that away. You're like, all right, well, we gave away a MAC-10 to take down an AK-47. That's, that's probably a little bit of fun all on its own. They are setting up for it here. They've got to be careful. Kerrigan is still hiding in that corner, and it's hard to check. They make the jump out, and Kerrigan keeps spraying. Instead of following the guy that's already out the window, he leaves that up to his teammate Hunter with a strong kill there to bring down Kerrigan, though. And Brokey, he's on the site, and he's feeling a little bit lonesome for backup. Amanek will take him down. Spray long range for Hunter. That is very optimistic. Green, could he find the kill here? Amanek was already a little bit tagged up, but it doesn't matter. He's going to hit the headshot anyway. And it's a two versus one. Olofmeister on his own here with a Galil. Very strange round. Just uh, a lot of it decided by just individual one versus ones in that B bomb site versus Amanek and came out on top. You got to give it to Hunter, though. He hits that shot on Kerrigan. Don't know how yet. I think he was able to just barely walk up with the AWP, but that was a sick shot. Okay, now Olofmeister has the info. Now he knows. There it is. Turns it into a 1v1. He knows where both players are now for G2. This is so important. I don't even think he faked running away. He just wanted to see if he could do it. Oh, it's close. He had the right idea. Nexa went and checked for him, but headshot will make the difference. That's really, really close. That was almost a clutch there. I think he, in his mind, he was like, if I relocate really quickly, maybe I could do it. But he, I think he changed his mind. Mm -hmm. Last second there. All right. Important round for G2 and Amanek in charge of... I mean, those two fights in, the, in that bomb site. If he loses even the second one then, it's a it's a tough round to win. He's a hero. He's a hero. So, once again, Amanat coming up with the goods for his team. A little flash over top mid just to keep things honest. Hunter gonna go ahead and show some presence, but this is looking like it's going to be a quick play. Onto A, although a nice smoke into Palace could Yep, slow things down. Once that smoke goes in, they're deciding, okay, we're gonna go ahead and we've baited out quite a bit of utility here. And we'll leave our lurker behind. That's going to be Nico just sitting up in Palace. Speaking of utility, look at the grenades on G2. In spite of the fact that they they won the round, but because they win it in a one versus one, they just have almost nothing to work with here. Nico going down to rain. That is a big kill up in the A apartments. And oh, the way that they were rotating, it looked like they wanted to do one of those strategies where they kind of they start to make some noise at B and and push that. And when people rotate out of the A bomb site, you've got that late lurker in A that can shoot people to the back as they're running out. Obviously, that's not going to be possible any longer, so a bit of a shame losing Nico that early on. Run boost into the middle. Still got some time in this round. 50 seconds. Getting the mid control from all different sides. This is, uh, I really appreciate the fact that uh, FaZe Clan are taking steps to eliminate that Lurker in Palace. We've always said it, how important that role is on the T side to have that guy, because he just, he keeps it possible for you to hit that A site, but he also makes it a threat if you hit B to catch the rotators, right? So Nico dying multiple rounds now in Palace has really hampered G2's abilities. I don't know how Hunter wins that fight against Kerrigan, because... That just uh, looked like it should have never happened. Kerrigan maybe even could have backed out. Four versus three now. Olofmeister spraying kind of in between them. Twist with some great tapping at range. And Brokey, I don't know if they know where he is. I think they probably do now. Seven seconds, six seconds though. They have to go for the bomb plant. Why are they spending time on this? They're going to win the round now no matter what. They needed to go for the bomb plant with one of them fighting Brokey at the same time. That is a little bit of a misstep. 
And a, a real shame for that, because they actually got close enough to the bomb site that it could have worked. I think they heard him scoping right at the end, so they kind of knew that he was on the site. Wow, that is a, that's a close round. So close. But again, Freeze being proactive, catching Nico and Palace. I mean, that just forces them into mid. That forces them into an awkward situation on that B site later on. Kerrigan somehow just really fluffed that duel with Hunter. You're right to point it out. But that kill from Twist, getting the trade on short is so important as well. Everything coming together here for FaZe in these rounds, it really feels like a G2. They had an explosive pistol that worked out really well. But past that, it's just been a clutch. It isn't really anything you can build on here for G2 in these buy rounds. So another round of Eco coming up here for G2. A terrific chance for FaZe to build some more money and to build some more confidence. Yeah, and because they had some some of those really successful rounds earlier, it means even if some of these rounds are a little bit close into 2v2s at the end, they're still starting to build, you know, or they have enough bank uh, to actually make these upcoming round wo uh, rounds work. And that's super important, right? Still three and a half thousand there on Brokey, 2,000 on Olofmeister. It's something to build on. Brokey will take down Amanek to start with. And the rest of the pistols here, Nico hanging around. There's the headshot to bring down Rain. Almost catching Twist. It's actually going to try and make the jump for it there. Didn't want to commit to it, it seemed. Going to have a chance for another fight here. Again. Oh, that's a spin. Dropping Kerrigan. This is, I was about to say, this is why you don't fight him. Just leave him alone. He has to get to a bomb site. But if you keep doing this, he's going to keep taking the fight. And from the looks of it, winning it. Third one maybe coming in here. All of Meister's thinking about Nico's got it red and he'll pop his head as well. Absolutely disgusting round. But a classic as well. Nico has shown up for the major, and everyone loves it. Brokey and Twist, two versus four. Jax is just hovering over the window here. He's just won the round with three Deagle headshots. Uh, what can you do against that? <laughs> don't give them. Don't give them the opportunity. Uh, That's what you have to do. You have to try and avoid getting into that long-range fight. Uh, it's just gross what Nico's capable of with the Deagle. He's always a threat. My, and dude, jokingly in the past, you've just said, you know, stop him buying rifles and just give him a deagle every round. <laughs> He'll get more kills. He is always a threat with that pistol. It's so sick. And well, now, does he find the shot? It's pretty. The answer is no. But you see, the reason is, Anders, he had the M4A1. If he had the deagle, it would have been fine. But no, had to use the M4A1, and he dies. Wow. Some of those shots were, again, I mean... That's where you, and you know, on a team like this, maybe the first one you could be like, all right, maybe so. But some of these later ones here, this spin though is, is just disgusting. But so sick. You would want for there to be a call from the top down. So presumably Kerrigan's sort of, you know, so, wait a minute, guys. There's like 40 seconds. Just they have to get onto a site to put the bomb down. While they're doing that, it's way less likely that Nico is going to be landing some of those shots because they're all running across the bomb site. So I would say it's a, it's, it's only really a slight misstep because on the other hand, there just aren't that many players in the world that can do what Nico does. So. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's maybe also hard to expect. Four to three now, it's, stolen round. It's just one of those risks you run. But this kind of builds on that narrative, Anders, that uh, these have been really weird rounds where G2, I mean, pistol round, 1v1 clutch, Nico getting three headshots with the Deagle. You know, it's, it's, these are kinds of rounds where you can't really count on that happening every single time if you're G2. True. So they're not out of the woods yet. FaZe Clan still shouldn't feel like they're out of, um, that like they've lost control of the situation. They just need to keep their heads in the game. And I think that was a good time for Kerrigan to call a timeout. Just to slow it down, give them a chance to breathe and shake it off. Yeah, it's a good point. And ooh, that's the smoke. Yeah, just twist going down. He was getting a little bit curious there. I was going to say, I think on the other side of it, though, G2, this is also the kind of round that they need to, to build on, right? They need to fight. This is where everyone should get fired up and, and really start to put in some more kills on the board because... Yeah, you, you, need, you can't rely on Nico getting the, the triple kill every round. So, just try and see if you can find some stability in that. All of them are getting that kill. Oh, the bomb. It fell in towards all of That is unfortunate. He's going to follow that with a headshot. Yeah, he can put down the Molotov and buy a lot of time. I can't believe. Even they're in their two on three here. All of about to get shot in the back. That's a nice jump from Hunter. He himself is going to get caught jumping from Rain. <laughs> just everyone died jumping. Fair enough. Bring the last to go down, and G2 will win the round. So weird. What are these rounds going on here, Anders? The bomb, even the bomb is conspiring against G2 in a way. Somehow yeah. decides to fall into the ladder room. What is that? That could have been really dangerous. It, again, all all it took there for Olofmeister was 
was sort of hearing it or turning around if he could have got that kill. It was a two-on-two, -two and he had the bomb under his control for a while at least. That's very cool to see Olaf Meister coming up with some kills, though. Uh, a lot of, you know, he's, uh, he's kind of just been trying to find his game again as he was brought back onto the roster out of semi-retirement. And, uh, you know, he was struggling for a little bit, trying to keep that 1.0 rating, but... Uh, He's, it feels like he's been powering up I am fall. He really rallied towards the end of that tournament, started popping off and having some big rounds. And well, at least here, you know, it was eight kills so far. And so if FaZe can count on him to come up, that's going to be terrific for them. And it's still early days. I mean, this is a map where it's it's really not until the very end of the map that you start uh, to get worried because it's still a 50-50 in terms of like eight, seven halves. It's really rare to see one side dominate the other. Yeah. So... Just expect, just be patient. We get to just kind of sit here and really enjoy these rounds right now. Well, Kerrigan, he gets dropped, and they just, they made the right call. A little bit late here in the, uh, in the round. It's G2, get the bomb plant down. They've still left Nico over on this, on this A side. I guess it's not a, it's not necessarily that bad. Just always got to be careful about giving away more guns. They've already had the one AK here on Olaf Meister. But that means G2 are about to be in the lead. Five to four. That is interesting. I, mean, I think even worse still is that that economy that FaZe had building so early on, it's it's been wiped out. So they are going to have to be a little bit careful here that they don't let G2 run away with too much. Because again, I think we've we've seen Nico hit some good shots. Hunter is up there as well. And Amanek. So a good little trio. Actually, pro probably plenty of a trio to make a, a best of one work. They can keep that going and have those three people hitting shots. That should be that should be really cool. Tenth round coming up now. They're lacking some some important tools now on the phase side of things amongst the other things that AWP. That's something that they're gonna need to to find a way to uh, to get back on that CT side. That'd be very helpful. I'm and curious to see. Oh, well, go ahead. Just the AK on all of my stuff. No wall. This is a real strategy that uh, they're building off of G2, getting Nexa down there fast. And this time it's Hunter. He will be backed up, though. He's not alone in Palace, but a very quick acceleration onto the A bomb side is what G2 are trying to go for here with Nexa lurking in mid, trying to catch the rotate. Rain heard the footsteps. He knows somebody is on the bomb side right now. And sure enough, Twist getting caught. Beautiful work from G2 so far. Yeah, this is working out so well, and they're going to be out of money once again. Nico will find the second kill of the round for himself. Olaf, it's not, he, unfortunately, he's going to have to try and save the, the AK once again. Yeah, what a cool change of pace from G2. We've seen a lot of slow rounds this major so far. Teams really playing the clock, taking their time, you know, forcing their opponents to use utility. It's not often that we see teams really just decide to change up the pace completely and accelerate quickly onto a bomb site. And it wasn't even necessarily a rush. It was just very quick moving off of Hunter, getting that kill from Palace early. Yeah, and, and the fact that there was nothing to signal it means you're so caught when you're down yeah. there. You think, why are they that far out with no flashes, no smokes? What's going on? It could definitely be very disruptive. All of Meister goes down. Jax will find him. This is such a, this is such a nice return. They could have been rattled already, G2, right? You win the pistol, but then you lose the following round. They start to build all that economy. It feels like they're they're you know they were up three to one at one point. And now here we go. They're right back in the mix, six to four in their favor. Starting to look quite fresh, I've got to say. And the money again is gonna be wrecked on the phase side. Yeah. So what is the solution? Well, they're starting to pick up some pace here, G2. That's three rounds in a row now on for them on the T side. Fully bought up with all the nades that they could want as well. So it's a great opportunity for them to get a feel-good round now that FaZe have to go for uh, an eco. Still, G2 have to be careful. Obviously, that was the second round of this first half that uh, FaZe were able to upset them with a force buy. So they still have to be careful around these scouts and digs. Don't want to be running into it one after another again. But I like this. Just making a little bit of noise over towards Banana with, uh, or towards B rather, <laughs> with uh, some grenades just to keep FaZe honest. And then they can work back over here for the mid-crunch. bit of a lean towards the A-bomb site, but I'm almost a bit surprised that FaZe aren't trying to do more of a stack in a round like this. This is the kind of round where if you if you could find a way to, to shock them and, you know, have that four-man, maybe in five-man stack at either A or B and, and just come out with a bit of a victory, that's the ticket right back into the game. Sneaking out as Olofmeister, I like that. 
And now they're, they're gravitating towards... They, I think they read the fact that Olaf hasn't found anyone as a sign that maybe it's going to be a B hit. Whereas, in fact, Rain is going to run into everyone. It's a pretty cool headshot, but it's not going to save them. This should be a pretty quick bomb plant here. Although, actually, G2 are slowing it down. I thought they would just go for it, but... Is that going to buy enough time for the rotation of the CT spawn? We still have 30 seconds on the clock. There's Jax putting down the bomb. And it's being bodyguarded all over the place. They're making absolutely sure no one could pick that from middle. Olaf, though, sneaking in. There's one shot. Oh, he's flashed for the follow-up, though. Can he still get it? There's an escape. I think Jax has made his way back, and he's going to take down Kerrigan. That is so fortunate. Jax coming in with a nice triple spray down. Olaf Meister finally back for that kill that he wanted 10 seconds ago, but couldn't get because of the flashbang. And now, I don't know if he could do this. Again, he does not have a kit and mm. no more nades either. So this is probably the best, the best move for Olaf, even if it... It would be fun to see him try and go for it. It's not going to happen. I guess he's living up to his name. Oh, he turns around. Both of them. That was so awkward. Hunter running with his knife out, trying to beat him. And Olaf Meister thinking that they were hot on his heels. What a shame. Still, the Hunter is rewarded. <laughs> such a close round, though. These, I mean, FaZe are such a threat with these pistols. It's so crazy how much damage they're able to do each of these eco rounds. And yet... It is still going to be G2 picking up another one. Five rounds in a row now for G2. This is really starting to pick up some steam. I mean, yeah, it makes you wonder what would have happened if Olaf hadn't got flashed. If he could have yeah. landed a second headshot on Jax. Because then Jax doesn't get the triple kill anymore. And maybe they just actually win the round. Seven to four, though. Hunter in the middle. Kind of walking into the smoke. Is he, if he gets a kill here at all, it's gonna, there's no one can rotate. Amanek jumping down. What a great entry. It doesn't matter that he dies. That is all he has to do. Olaf Meister, he gets him in return. Hunter is hiding inside and twist. Oh, he knows, but Hunter's going to get the vision back first. Dude, Olaf. That's the benefit. Yeah, he's he's all over the place, but Rain goes down. It's a double orb. Now, do you want to risk it and try and lose it here? No scope not connecting. That's one of the rifles gone. Oh, man. This is a real good first half right now for G2. They're about to be 8-4. and four. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is, I mean, this is really just going to set them up for success. Now they win the first half. And if they can keep extending this from here, it's just going to shape up even nicer. I mean, now you're going to get FaZe Clan on pistols going into this next one. And so ideal, in an ideal world, G2 could run away with this first half and utterly crush FaZe Clan's hopes. We could have a rare performance here. But again, G2, stylistically, very different right now. They are, I mean, because that was an aggressive aggressive play onto the B bomb site this time. Really just explosive behind the flashes. And just throw, I think it's catching FaZe off guard with how aggressive G2 are playing this. They're not letting FaZe make plays for info. They're not, you know, holding angles and waiting for the CTs to dictate when the action starts. G2 are the ones who are determining where the fight happens right now. And I think that's kind of throwing FaZe for a loop. And realistically, when you look at the way that, uh, that, that plays out. If Amanek dies one second earlier and doesn't get the entry kill, the whole entire train that's coming up behind him could stop in its tracks. Suddenly, they could reset the whole thing. They could, you know, throw out another Molotov on the ground or smoke themselves up and hide inside of the bomb site. So it, I mean, Olaf Meister got that kill one second after his teammate fell. But that is that's the real difference. If you're an entry fragger, you know that. I don't think Amanek is upset at all that he got shot in the back. He's like, whatever, it's all fine. I did what I came here to do. 13th round. Jax is being set up now. Are they going to flash him in? He's really quick on the ramp. But again, the speed that you were talking about, they're going to continue with that once again. He's already out firing at the boxes. Good headshot from Nexa. Kerrigan was just curious, but that'll get him killed. Brokey on that AWP. Might already be time to retire it and try and save it. Even if, even if you want to do something here, you want to be a hero at that CT spawn position, could easily lose you the rifle. Rain, he's crouched here at the edge. I think they've already heard the deagle. So they're going to be aware, bro. Can't see much of anything. Olaf Meister is down. Rain, he's going to get swiped as well. And that leaves Brokey. And again, running is... It's just unfortunately the best choice. Man, what a hard game this has turned into. It's going to be 9-4. to four. Good flick. But I don't think G2 care at all about losing these rifles. They've got so much money. They're not going to be saving in this first half at all. They're getting completely railroaded in this first half is what's happening right now. I'm so surprised by this turnaround from G2. Oh, yeah. Can't catch a break, can he? They know. He's boxed in. He 
shot at the back. Amanek with a uh, bit of an easier kill this time for him. 9-4 to four in their favor. 14th round. They have enough to, to rebuy the AWP. That is at least something. Yeah, they at least have that. I mean, that was the round of eco coming up, so now they actually have some money to play with here. But uh, they have to win out the remaining rounds of this half uh, phase or it's not going to go well for them. This could be the case of uh, G2 also just playing up to the level of their opponents and this really working against FaZe Clan right now in this uh, first half. As Nico, probably that one round gets uh, gets G2 pretty fired up. All of a sudden, it's changing it. Jax again with the aggression just running out here. Powder flash and Rain gets into the bomb site, but they know that he's there. He's not going to stay alive for long. Yep, here come the Molotovs to put on top of him. Smoke will buy him some time. Actually, enough time for Brokey to show up, but now Rain is playing on top of it. Are they falling back? Yes, they are. They're calling the retreat, but Hunter, if he can beat them to the B bomb site, that's still worth it. Kerrigan making the run. Did he hear it? Hunter, it looks like he's looking for it. He might have realized if he has, he's going to call it into his teammates and they're going to be aware. They're already walking, but Kerrigan scoped up. He's going to catch. No, it goes the other way. It looked like that should have been the kill. Jax, that's a really smart move. Almost could have called Rain. Probably should have won that fight. Brokey, though, he's got his back turned to that AK and he goes down. He wanted to catch them up in the hallways. Brokey playing some four or five dimensional chess here, trying to catch everyone. But instead, it blows up. It's Amanek with a double kill in the round. It is a tenth on the board for G2. And G2 are just looking terrific right now. Hunter, that's the key information. He's able to locate Kerrigan, and there is no way that his teammates rotating in are going to get caught off guard at that point. They know where Kerrigan is, and that's unfortunate for Kerrigan. He just was not expecting there to already be somebody that far up. He had to take a risk, and it didn't work. And it's possible that Hunter, hearing the footsteps, he doesn't really know if it's down on, on the No, he, on knew, he knew. He knew. Yeah, but, but, well, he checks, so he definitely yeah, as knows. as soon as right? he clears it, he but knows. But that's what I mean. Like, initially, when he hears it, he can't know if it's catwalk go down below so he just goes and looks and says all right hunter goes down this round rain with a kill off meister going really aggressive and i'm not sure why maybe one of them help out rain down in underpass either way they both get killed and now it's a four on three this is an incredibly powerful first half for g2 still leaving two alive here on a side for phase and i think they're going to go for the gamble can they stack on A and just keep these three here and hope, cross their fingers, that this is where G2 is going to wind up? Why not? Yeah, it's looking like that's going to be the call from FaZe, and that would be a terrific gamble on their part. I mean, there's almost no better there's no better call is there. What, you have two oh. from us and a Deagle. Dude, dude. Man, G2 have just got them downloaded right now. But they might, I mean, keeping three people near the middle of the map, so you can go everywhere from there, right? If they show up middle, it's great, but... Yeah, but now it's like, you know, they're not going A. So this is... Uh... You'll have to retake, unless, unless... Yeah, they're rotating, it's good. But, it, I mean, the fact is, even if they actually have three people on the B-bombs, I was like, yeah, but they don't have almost anything to oh, fight wow. with. Oh, wow, no respect. Jax just walks through that smoke like it wasn't even there. Yeah, doesn't care, they've called it. Such a good call coming out here. G2 absolutely fired up, straight headshot to take down Kerrigan. A Brokian twist, a two versus four. What an incredibly powerful... Again, remember, FaZe won that second round after losing the pistol, and that's how they I mean, that's how they got off to a little bit of a jump. Otherwise, they've been wiped out in this first half. This is absolutely dominant. Roki next to fall, twist on his own, trying to take the fight against the rest of the G2 squad. It's not going to happen. 11-4 to 4 in favor of G2 in that first half. Well yeah. done. Utterly, yeah, utterly destroying FaZe Clan. I just can't get over how they just completely controlled this end of that set of that first half. I, you can't get around it. It's what eight rounds in a row that they managed to pick up. Nine rounds in a row. Nine rounds in a row for G2 on the T side. Total domination. And I bet you a lot of it has to do with that guy on your screen. Not that one, Hunter. But we just went past him, Nico. As he's just gonna be sitting here going, "Okay, okay, Kerrigan, I'm in your head. I know what's going on here. I know how to fix this." Yeah, I mean, and Nico was playing well. He, that that one triple deal round that yeah. really got them fired up. It seems Amanek has been playing so well. Some of the entries that he's got have been absolutely crucial to this particular half. And I've just got to say, the whole team is looking really fresh right now. Eleven four. What a what a demolishment so far. We'll see if it's going to change. Second half is coming up now. Phase. They need to wake up in a big way. They need this pistol, and then a lot more to follow up behind it. 
They have got a P250, actually two of them in play in this round, so they can try and equalize the distance of that USP. Always a good idea. Hunter, living up to his name, looking for the kill, taking down Kerrigan, who's had a pretty miserable game so far. He's three kills in the entire first half, and he's not going to get one of the pistol either, thanks to Hunter. But they get traded, at least it's a four on four, and now they're going to try and see if they can collapse onto that A-bomb site. Running out in the open It's pretty risky, but no one's found them yet. And maybe they could get a quick bomb plant here. You could see Rain, he kind of wants to do it, but he's not sure if anyone is going to be peeking him. So it's a bit risky while this is all going on. Amanek playing a game of patience against Olofmeister in the jungle at the moment. There's the headshot. Oh, Nexa, that's beautiful. And he keeps going. Triple headshot, wiping them out. And G2, they're going to win the pistol on the second half. Nexa. A little, a little bit quiet in the first half, but that was beautiful. FaZe playing scared, Anders. There's no two ways about it. FaZe playing scared. G2 are the ones taking the initiative at every turn, it feels like, right now. Aggressive aggressive rounds to finish the first half. And here, not even waiting for them to try and plant the bomb. Just saying, okay, we're going to come. You guys aren't going to plant. You guys aren't going to fight. We'll bring the fight to you. They are not letting FaZe get comfortable whatsoever. G2 are just completely controlling this map right now. It is so cool to see. This takes some real confidence. Just some real confidence and just some disrespect. Just not showing any respect to FaZe Clan. Yeah, I, I mean, this is really impressive. 12 to 4, Olaf Meister. Looking to see if he can get some revenge with the Deagle. Which is a good idea. They've got a lot of them on the seaside right now. So, we'll see. G2, even the smoke up here is something that we didn't really get to see too much out of when uh, when they were on the CT side phase. They, they kind of just went and fought Nico in the middle. Try and just have... Again, they have to get the bomb plant down eventually. Actually, speaking of which, the bomb is in T-spawn, so maybe they don't. They've just said the Deagles will what either win or we're not even going to try. What is going on here, FaZe? <laughs> just... I mean, you're, you're, you're in a point where you could potentially accelerate onto the bomb site, but you don't have the bomb. Yeah. This is really disappointing. I think it's they're doing that whole thing like, you know, you get to a new, you, you get to a new shore, you burn the boats, so everyone is really committed to it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there's no backing yeah, out. Yeah, there's no backing out. It's Deagles and nothing, baby. And not gonna work out. 13 to 4. G2. They are. <laughs> that's completely destroying phase. I'm shocked. And impressed at the same time. I And again, like I said, I feel like I've had my heart broken so many times by G2 that I just. Do you get excited too early? Is it too much here? Do you feel like. Should, should we be cheering for them? Or is it is it gonna be another painful turn of events? Oh, what's going on right now with phase is what I'm wondering. Because, I mean, it still remains Olaf Meister. Olaf Meister is the top fragger. Now, it's good to see Olaf hitting some shots. That's fantastic. Sure, yeah. But that's not the winning combination for FaZe Clan. Where is Twists? You know, where is Rain? Where is Brokey? What, what's going on here? I mean, they actually they have some kills, don't they? It's, I don't know. If you look at the scoreboards only, you would not from that think, oh, yeah, this is a 13-4 game. You look at that, you think this is probably like a 12-8 type game, maybe something. It, it, it mm. feels like it just should be way, way closer than it actually is. So, just round after round, bleeding out towards G2. Nicely done there, Rain catching out uh, Nico. All right, so a little angle play now. Rain can actually start to infiltrate this defense. Maybe we can get a crunch going on towards the A site. Faze seem to think that that's possible. Twist was rotating around to T spawn now with that bomb. Rain though getting caught. Yeah, dangerous. Yeah, especially because the element of surprise kind of goes away when... Not that they could have guessed that he probably would have jumped in the window. They they might have been thinking about that anyway. But now they definitely know. And he's he's been all the way pushed out. Down the middle we go. Nexa with a peek. He's going to go for it again. Rain, though. Quick on the trigger. He was dead. 100% there. Broke here to take down Hunter. Who I think was pushed in there by the Molotov that Rain threw. Yeah. He, was sort of, he was actually herded towards it. Do they get to have a round like that yeah, now, Phase? They've, they've already given up. That's incredible. Rain doing all the work. Oh, here we go. The man is the master of the pistol. Now, I think we talked about this when when Astralis were making that comeback on Ancient, how you could, you could sometimes you can win a round and then it'll just that'll reset everything. It doesn't feel to me like this is that kind of round. This isn't some, some crazy thing. I mean, it's cool from Rain, but you need a lot more. Yes. They've, they're going to have to build so much behind this. It will be 5 to 13 at the very least. Such a long road back. This would be almost unprecedented comeback, I feel like. <laughs> Hasn't this been the tournament of comebacks, though, it feels like? Yeah, it's been a lot. 
I mean, it feels like we've had a lot of teams playing these rounds very close, and the pressure is just enormous right now. This is the major, after all, and these are best of ones, and so you can get ahead, but then, as we say in the past, you know, as we've seen in the past, it can be very difficult to finish, to get the win, right, to end the map, and so we've seen a lot of teams fight back in these series, and uh, I wouldn't count FaZe in there. I mean, it's a veteran roster on this team. I would not count them out. So now it's a question of whether or not uh, G2 can show some fortitude here and just shut FaZe down, not even let them get any momentum going in this second half. Some early aggression over towards Ramp, at least with the nades. Nexa holding close at the MP9. Yeah, might actually be favored against the, the FAMAS here, oh. just from the speed of fire, but no, Kerrigan. Flash, it, it, Kerrigan somehow dodges that flash completely. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And now they're going to be throwing every single nade they have onto the bomb side. Amadek is playing deep back here with the organ play. Can you hear that bomb going? You think he can, but he's not able to get the shot, and the bomb will be planted. So a lot of spray through the walls of smoke that are up around the bomb site, but nobody finding a kill. And now they have a hard choice to make here on the G2 side. Do they actually stick around and potentially lose the guns, or do they try and go for the retake? They don't have any control of middle yet. Yeah, they're going to have to go for it. They, they just can't. They have to run because... They're not controlling middle and all. The bomb is planted kind of for that position. Yep. They would have to run out and try and just sit on top of it with no smokes or anything. That's just not going to be happening. So they decided to save what they have, give another round. I mean, you can also, this is also something you could afford to do when you are up this far. That's maybe yep. the other way to look at it. Exactly. Don't lose focus. You're not really giving too much away here. You're just holding on to your guns. And you say, I mean, with four alive, uh, you've got quite a bit of firepower here. You're just going to say, right. You take this one, it's fine. We're not going to give you a chance to put us on pistols and really break our economy because now we can have four rifles with full nades and it's going to be a very difficult round for you going into this one. So I don't mind this at all from G2. I actually quite like it. And uh, in the meantime, on the uh, other stream, Copenhagen Flames have murdered Evil Geniuses 16-2. So uh, that's that series done. And Copenhagen Flames Damn. just continue their reign of terror. That is pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. Oh, so that what put Copenhagen Flames 1-1 one, one now, so that'll be interesting. Yeah. Not a bad position to be in. Rain sneaking in around the smoke. We've got to be real careful here. Nico looking down towards underpass, but he's going to get taken down. Rain with a perfect timer to catch him there. Molotov goes deep on the other side, and that can give them a ticket in towards the ladder room. So they're going to be able to hang out there for a minute. Four on five now. Hunter. Ah, clever. Yeah, trying to get that job done. That is cool, using the audio cue, trying to bait a response there, trying to bait him into the bullets. Yeah. Can they make their way through here, though? Nexa is thinking about it. And... Oh, Kerrigan's a split second too late. USP, that's so scary. I mean, if, if, if he would have found him, they might have been dead anyway. A little bit of a setup here. Oh, but it gets destroyed. Rain pushing right through and, bro and knocking down both Amanek and Jax. That's actually crazy. He just wiped out the defense completely. Rain is here to win this game back for sure. He's finally going to go down, but it doesn't really matter now. Hunter in a one versus three, and he's going to get stopped by Brokey. This... This is a different Rain from the one that we saw in the first half, and that should mm -hmm. be cause for concern for G2. Well, Rain is... I mean, Rain... We've been saying it for a while now, right? Rain is a LAN player. Yeah. He, he's I think this online period has made him jaded. He's not interested in it. He's like the Astralis guys. You know, he's just he's just done it all online. Why is he bothering playing online? Online doesn't interest him. LAN is what interests him. It's his environment. It's where he thrives. And I think we're starting to see him come back into shape now. Now that we're actually getting back on LAN, we're having some competitions. We're seeing the best rain that we've seen in, what, 18 months. So it's really good to see him come back into form here. And he has turned out to be a real heavy hitter for FaZe that Kerrigan can count on. And I mean, He's, he's great at it all, right? Pistol rounds, solid. Rifles, also good. Can clutch. He can do it all for, for Kerrigan. So imagine Kerrigan. He's got to be overjoyed right now that Rain is just coming back into form. <laughs> That's such an insane play. Edge of the smoke, right as Amanek was turning around to try and help out inside of He was worried about the B hallways. He wanted to have the crossfire set up there. And they're gone. 7 to 13. It's now just a six round gap. Twist running up to the bomb site. There is a big stack here, but it's all pistols. Ooh, oh dear. That's a problem. Crouching gonna... into a deagle crosshair. Yeah, they you just wasn't expecting it. Let's see if they can pick up the rifle. Yep. Nexus got its hands on it. Oh, but okay. I mean, you can't lose to another. You can't lose to another pistol out here. Fix. No, you can't do that. That would just be unforgivable. 
The problem is when you lose a player early on in a round, like it can vary. You can send chills down the entire team, right? Suddenly everyone's like, ooh. Yep. They started walking on eggshells. Yeah. I, no one wants to make that next mistake. So they're really far spread out as well. Rain, again, I guess you just have to, you have to take the leash off him here because he's been hitting every single shot. So maybe it's fine to just say, run into the middle rain and kill some people. But, but ultimately, there's no one that can revenge rain, right? If he goes down here, that's just it. There's no follow-up to it. So I am a little bit worried about this. The rest of them are grouping up towards the A ramp. There's a, there's a three-man setup here. Actually, Hunter is not that far away in middle as well. And they're going to lurk their way out. This is filthy. You have to be careful about Amanek, though. I mean, they're making some noise now, so this is definitely being heard. Should be calling in the rotation from the other side. Rain trying to get through. Nico, nope. Hunter shooting him in the back. And now it's a 5 on 3. 30 seconds. No one's checked for it. They don't know that Amanek is here. All he has to do is take a step. Oh! All of them with the save. Nico with the headshot. But Kerrigan is back, and it's still going to be the round. I don't think Jax even realized. He's like, is there more people? Nope, they're all dead. Go defuse that bomb. Oh, that happened quick. It's all almost blew up for them. Amanek, like he's thinking, he can feel it. He squeezes that trigger and then he's dead. That nearly was the... That I would have been so devastating. I'm so amazed though that they start running. Why did they start running? I, I don't get the, 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 that they give the audio cue like that. The whole point of them walking around there without using utility, without using smokes or flashes or anything is to just have the element of surprise, except that as soon as you hit ramp, you started running. So the guy holding Shadow hears it immediately. I wonder if maybe what happened is that Rain got spotted in middle. So so he might have just called out and said, the game is over. Like, game's up. I, we, they know I'm coming, right? So if they see me lurking, maybe they, they can guess the rest. So maybe Weird. it was something like that. They were just like, all right, it's all it's all up. We you know. That's uh, really interesting. Very curious. But, uh, I mean, talk about a windfall for G2. Another monster round for them to win. Yeah. Just off of pistols, I mean, that is, they have had two critical rounds go their way where they've just had deagles. And now, FaZe, I mean, talk about demoralizing. You're going to have to just play perfectly from here on out to avoid overtime. Oh, Jack's turning around, but they're all coming from good counter flash as well. I don't think Carrick could, could see much of anything. They will get the refrag, and that's worth it. Now it's a uh, tricky four on four here. Molotov will relocate Rain. He's not going to stop planting the bomb, though. Yeah. And another tough call to make. You can hang around and look for a kill. If you make it a four and three, you could go for it. But in terms of the money, they don't have that much to throw away. So this is a hard round to try and go for. I think you back off now. Are they really going to go for this? Oh, grenade on top of the Molotov. Roki, he just runs right out and executes Nico. That's not bad. Olaf is going to go down, and they are actually doing it. Three versus one, and the bomb is planted here in the open for Twist. He can go for it, but Hunter will take him down, spins around, and goes straight for that defuse. Oh, he doesn't oh, no. have it. There we go. I think they still have it. It was Amanek that had the kit. It's going to be down to the wire, Amanek. Oh, no way. It no is so way. close. Oh, no kit on the, on the first player defusing. By the way, Hunter with a triple in this round. He is up to 21 kills. That is absolutely crazy. 15 to 7, and it's G2 on match point. Well, that's just a kick in the dick, Anders. Yes, it, it was. That's unreal that they get that defuse there, and they could not have cut it any closer. Could not have cut it any closer. What a round for G2. And that was a buy round as well, and the setup was there. I've, I've got to say, the HG and Molotov towards the truck where Brokey was standing, he shouldn't even have, have had a kill on Nico. He probably should have just been dead. Mm. And that would have made it an even more one-sided retake. So yes, I mean, that's a great combination of throws. And you think when Twist goes into retakes like that, he's got such crazy snappy aim. Do you think that's a situation that actually kind of favors him? Because he's just so quick with his aim. 1v3 like that in a series of duels. But he, he uncharacteristically messes up the second fight there and just... And the bomb was kind of planted. Pull it. Yeah, and the bomb was even planted for him, right? Yeah. He could have probably done a little bit more, but um, tough. 15 to 7 now. One more round, and Amanek starts it off real well, taking down Kerrigan. Down to 4 on 5, and they don't have any almost anything to fight with either phase. They're actually in a fair bit of trouble here. It was going so well. Rain was in charge of the comeback. He was just plowing through this whole uh, second half, but now he's been stopped. Yeah, just can't. I mean, just so much respect right now for G2 for keeping it together. Despite FaZe coming up with a game plan here, it just feels like G2 are the ones to come away with the critical rounds. 
And it's really just been the G2 show ever since the very beginning of this map. <laughs> since like five rounds in. Let's see. Hemenek back here. No smoke up to block him right now. They're probably going to need that if they can get it. They have another one left, so it might be worth getting rid of him. Also a lurk in the middle from Olaf Meister, but he's not going to win the fight. Nico, yeah, he knew that that was part of the push. Next, I will take down Rain. Oh, it's definitely done with here. Twist is going to be falling, and Brookie on his own with a Deagle. Nothing that he could do. G2 with an absolutely brilliant... Oh, good headshots, but it's 16 to 7. G2 pick it up in a best of one against FaZe. That is a brilliant result. Wow, and well, we none of us predicted it. None of us predicted this. We all thought that FaZe would have it, that G2 were looking a little weak right now, not quite sure how they were performing. Well, going up against FaZe, I mean, that is just a terrific performance for them. They just utterly murked 